Tonight's resolution is as follows. 15 million able-bodied adults on government welfare would have a better chance at economic betterment if they were taken off welfare. One more time, 15 million able-bodied adults on government welfare would have a better chance at economic betterment if they were taken off welfare. So get your votes in now. Also, for the audience at home, submit your questions in the comments, and we'll pick a couple to read out loud during the Q&A session. Now, on to the event. Defending tonight's resolution, we have Taryn Bragdon, President and CEO of the Foundation for Government Accountability. Taryn, please come to the stage. Opposing the resolution, we have Neera Tandon, President and CEO of the Center for American Progress. Neera, please come to the stage. We are now closing the voting. Okay. Taryn Bracken. Taryn, you have 12 minutes to defend the resolution. 15 million able-bodied adults on government welfare would have a better chance at economic betterment if they were taken off welfare. Take it away, Taryn. This summer I met Dell, a young man from Cuba. He risked his life traveling from Cuba to Miami three years ago in a small boat with 13 others. Many of those 13 died. He swam two miles to shore as that boat sank. He did all that. He risked his life to work in America. And in just three short years, he's experiencing America to the fullest. He completed technical school, he got married, he has a child, and he's now working in construction. And as soon as he set foot on this land of opportunity, he started realizing his potential. He's living an American dream, and his children will never have to risk their lives to live the dream as well. Growing up, I had an aunt and uncle who never worked. They were both born in America, but tragically, they chose to trade the lifetime of opportunity for the certainty of monthly welfare. But free government welfare cash assistance, free government food, free government health care came at a high price. My aunt died in her 50s. And as I sat at her funeral, I thought of what might have been. She had so much to offer. She was born in America. But she, her husband, and her daughters were trapped in a lifetime of dependency. For decades, they lived on an island of despair, surrounded by welfare and no work. Two people, one America, but two vastly different outcomes. One risked his life to travel from despair to opportunity. Another, born in opportunity, but lived in despair and without hope. It didn't have to be that way. I want you to think about your first job for pay. Mine was actually uh, cleaning out the cow stalls in my parents' barn. And now I work in politics. Kind of same job, different shovel. <laughs> but whether it was my first job or every job after, work gave me new experiences and it showed me the possibilities in myself. Does welfare do that? I think it does the opposite. You want the simple truth? Welfare is so destructive because it pays people not to work. And so they don't. And they remain in dependency and poverty for a very long time. I founded the Foundation for Government Accountability because I've seen firsthand what America has to offer and the power of work, both in my own life and in others and the tragedy of misguided government welfare programs. 
Our experts have testified in 30 states before numerous committees of both the US House and Senate, commissioned over 100 public opinion polls, and our reforms have been passed now in 34 different states. And those reforms mean that literally millions of Americans will move from welfare to work and on to a better life. First, I want to make sure we're on the same page about a few things. This debate is about, as Jean said, able-bodied adults of working age on welfare, people who are between 18 and 64 years old. It's not about those with disabilities. It's not about kids or the elderly. It's not even about adults whom social workers or doctors say are unable to work, whatever the physical or mental health reason might be. It's about people who can go to work tomorrow, but do not able-bodied, think work-ready. And when I talk about welfare, I'm talking about able-bodied adults who receive welfare cash assistance, food stamps, and or Medicaid. I'm not talking about Social Security or Medicare. There are at least 15 million adults in America who fit this definition and are on at least one major welfare program. It's nearly record high welfare enrollment right now at the same time, we have near record low unemployment in most places. So who are these able-bodied adults? Well, most are white, most are under 35, nearly half are men, and most do not have young children at home. That's a problem. Welfare used to be this program that was targeted towards the truly needy, very poor children, those with disabilities, maybe the, uh, and also the frail and poor elderly. And none of us in this room would debate the importance of a government safety net for the truly needy. I support those programs. But able-bodied adults on welfare should have to work, train, or volunteer to receive their welfare benefits long term. Work or train 20 hours a week, or volunteer about 40 hours a month. Why? 97 and 16. What if I told you about a program that ensured that 97% of people on it would be out of poverty? Would you support it? Do you know what that program is? Any full-time job. 97% of people who work full-time are out of poverty. It's true, yet only 16% of able-bodied adults on Medicaid do work full-time. Just one in six and the majority report no earnings at all. I think we'd all agree that people are better off going to work. Look, welfare is not terrible, but it is terrible if it keeps people from working. And what's better, what's the best way to help people move from welfare to work? It's to require them to work, train, or volunteer. And do you know why I know that's true? We studied it. We actually tracked 60,000 people impacted by work requirements in two states, not just some of them, all of them. We tracked parents and childless adults, all of them able-bodied. We tracked folks on food stamps as well as those on cash assistance. And we found an inspiring outcome. Before work requirements in these programs, only a portion of individuals worked. See, it's not enough to want to work. We all need a push and a deadline. But after work requirements, most went to work right away. Incomes of those working doubled over time. And average income of those working were above the poverty limit within 12 months. And welfare enrollment for these individuals dropped an astounding 75 to 90%. With a work requirement, people are on welfare for just a short period of time. And there are human faces to this success. Take Jason. He signed up for food stamps in 2009, just as the Great Recession was hitting. But there he remained for four years. No job, no income, just welfare. 1,705 days. But when Kansas implemented the work requirement, Jason was among the first to leave. And in just over three months, he got a job in the publishing industry, making $45,000 a year. Was Jason bad or wrong because he was on welfare? No, but welfare was wrong and bad because it kept Jason trapped by keeping him at home and away from his next job. Or take Amanda, she was stuck on the program since 1993. 1993, she signed up for food stamps just a few months before Bill Clinton's inauguration, Nera might remember, Hillary's husband. 
For 7,579 days, Amanda was trapped in dependency. But with the right policy in place, she quickly found a job and worked her way out of poverty. And you know what was the most interesting thing we found? We wondered if folks would move essentially from welfare to Walmart. But nothing could be further from the truth. Individuals moved into 600 different industries. 600 different industries. Less than 5% actually went into general retail or Walmart type stores. Many in healthcare, construction, technical positions. In fact, one in five started an attempt job and then often moved into permanent employment. Consider this other fact. In Texas, do you know how long a single mom on welfare cash assistance is on the program as she meets the work requirement? 22 days. That's right, just three weeks if she's meeting the work requirement. Work is so much more than a paycheck. Whose future would you bet on? A woman working a few hours and taking home $100? Or a guy not working at all and receiving that same $100 in food stamps? Who's more likely to get more hours, another shift or a new job? Who feels better at the end of a day? But the true cost is not about the taxpayer spending. The true cost is the money not reaching the truly needy. Let me explain. At the same time we have near record welfare enrollment for able-bodied adults, we have 600,000 Americans with intellectual and developmental disabilities, as well as frail kids and elderly on waiting lists for key Medicaid services. Because when you take a dollar away or, I'm sorry, when you take a dollar and give it to those choosing not to work, you take a dollar away from those waiting lists from cops, kids, or roads. Here's one of them. Not long after birth, a rare neurological condition forced Skylar Overman onto Arkansas's Medicaid waiting list. There she would wait for nearly 10 years. She was immobile and relies fully on her family for the help Medicaid provides. And from the beginning, her mother, Lindsay, fought for her daughter to get life-saving services and medication. But she's still on that waiting list. And there are more than 3,000, like Skylar, waiting in Arkansas alone. America is a rich country. But our nation's wealth is only as strong as the people working to support it. And this debate is not about what can we afford. It's about the cost to people's lives when they're trapped on welfare and in despair and don't experience the power of work. And the cost to those we're not serving, like Skylar. My father grew up in dysfunction, and my mother grew up in a family wrecked by alcohol. I'm number five of eight kids. And like Nira, I'm the direct beneficiary of parents who worked hard to overcome the challenges they faced or were born into. But that better life and the opportunity we both enjoy came as a direct result of their love and support, but also as a direct outcome of the hard work, employment, and opportunity they created. Don't we owe the same thing for those 15 million able-bodied adults trapped on welfare? Thank you. You're attending.